I'm Mindfiend, this is the Secret World MMO, and this is a little boo. Uh, let me just move away from the bonfire a moment, just so uh, we don't have that crackling quite as loudly in the background. Right, um, we're going to do what I found to be possibly the most difficult mission <laughs> in the Secret World next. Um, but it's only difficult, really, because I didn't know too two aspects of the secret world um, and I'll take you through I'll take you through those as we get to them uh, but it is a mission that the majority of players will struggle with but before we do that um, you might be able to see just about there there's a glowing golden thing so what I'm going to do is while I'm here I'm going to go and um, collect a couple of pieces of law so here is one It's for the fog. The fog. There was no forecast. There were no screams. There was no sound. Only the fog. It crept in and it crept out. The people walked and the people died. Then they walked again. The fog followed the return of the lost fishing vessel, the Lady Margaret. The crew had a story to tell of a graveyard of ships, of the red seaweed clawoka that birthed the fog. Ask us about the Lady Margaret sweeting. Ask us properly and we will tell you. So we're beginning to get a picture of what, how the fog got here. Um, a ship was lost at sea, the Lady Margaret, with its crew, for what sounds like a couple of weeks actually. And uh, when it returned, very soon after the fog came with it, um, I will point you back to the rhyme of the ancient mariner if you want to know a little bit more about something like that and here's another piece of law another one for the fog this was the first one this is the bees getting in touch our wisdom flows so sweet taste and see transmit initiate new england pro uh, new england signal receive initiate the merc frequency low visibility will bring traffic to a crawl Initiate the neurotic syntax, witness the fog. You always get the bees getting in touch. But sometimes there's a little bit of information hidden amongst the uh, jibber jabber. <laughs> That's a nice word, jibber jabber. Right, okay, let's start this mission because it can be... It can be one that really puts some people off this, but please um, bear with us with it and you'll, you'll see just how good this can be. Something wicked. It's a pressure building. The kind that comes before a storm when it builds and builds but just won't break. Yeah, the ravens, they feel it too. Last time I saw them like this, when the trees were more birds than branches, there were murders. Yeah, that was back in 2002. Tail end of a long and wicked hot summer. By August, the whole town smelled rotten, and we hadn't seen a drop of rain since June. When the storm finally broke and the ravens flew, the killing stopped. Never believed what the paper wrote about that vagrant, neither did Helen, despite those boys in city council leaning on her. Well, she took a beating. Could have hurt her career, but she was right. It wasn't human hands cut those girls open. An unkindness of ravens, isn't that what they call it? My idea of reading is the TV guide, not anything that could charitably be called literature. But even I know signs and portents when I see them. Okay, now, as you can see here, investigation missions contain challenging puzzle-solving gameplay. Uh, these missions ch challenge your mind rather than your combat skills. Remember that there is an in-game browser to help with research. Press B to open the web browser. So, anything with the picture of a, um, a laptop there is uh, an investigation mission. And the investigation missions can be what makes this game special. But oh my god, they can also be what makes it frustrating too. It depends on... Um, a lot of it on look, some of it on how observant you are, some of it how smart. If you listen, you have to listen to every word that they say in the clues. 
that was one thing I didn't really pick up on at first, is that every word can have importance. They, they, they placed like... Um, almost like chess pieces on a, on a board really. The, the words, every single word is there for a reason. Now, she, if you listen carefully to Norma, she may, she wants you to investigate these mis these uh, murders. Let's go through this. Norma recalls a series of murders in the summer of 2002. She never believed the story served up by the news and says the real culprit wasn't even human. A case of multiple murders in a small town like Kingsmouth must have been widely discussed in the newspapers. Find more information about the case. Find more information about the murders. Right, so, back in 2002, something slaughtered some girls. Um, Norma says she doesn't believe what the papers wrote about the vagrant. So, she's mentioning newspapers, this mentions newspapers. So we have to find a way to find out what the newspapers say. Um, so let's try having a look at... Um, Kingsmouth.com again. Uh, let's search for Kingsmouth.com. Um, there we go. Now, will there be anything here? We've got the um, town seal, looks Omnia Vincent. Uh, the town of Kingsmouth with the lighthouse where um, it's supposed to be a feature of the Solomon Islands. Let's have a look at the news. Is there anything in the news that might tell us? Well, it's modern news, this. Kingsmouth Day 2010. The planning of this year's Kingsmouth Day has started. As usual, we extend an invitation to all non-residents of Kingsmouth to become honorary members of our proud town by being drunk. <laughs> dunked in the Miskatonic River <laughs> before the warmth of spring has truly set in. Other activities include horseshoe game, pool tournament, cookout, as well as local vendors offering special discounts for the weekend. So there's nothing really here. Um, you got a picture of the Kingsmouth Congregational Church. Um, this, of course, is the website. It's not the newspaper. So we have to find the newspaper. Now, um, partly because I know the game so well and the area so well and everything, I suppose um, there was a, f a flaw in what I did. Do you remember the mission scrapyard where we had to, a uh, supply room where we had to go and get um, items for uh, Sheriff Helen from the town? That's an, uh, basically a mission which gives you a chance to explore and uh, look around the town. Let's kill these zombies. And because I knew what I was doing, I've, I've done it before, I took you to the interesting um, buildings and we went straight through the mission. However, really, it's designed for you to take your time and wander around the town and have a look at things. And although we walked past it, one of the things we didn't actually go and look at because I was too focused on the mission was the town hall which by this point in here you're almost certain to have, have been in the town hall and had a good look so that's a failing on my part which why the first step of this clue might not seem quite so obvious let's just deal with those rather badly <laughs> um, but the first thing that you need to do is you'll need to come to the town hall because that's where the records for the years are kept, uh, the newspaper records. You would have found this if you'd, if you'd have been exploring um, on a... Uh, on a normal basis. So again, let's take these. You'd come along here. Uh, oops, next next street. Come on, let's get through. We're already killing zombies a lot better than we used to because we are quite considerably more powerful. 
Is Susie in there? Who is it? Susie's diner cook. No. You will once or twice come past and Susie herself will be in there. It's just a nice rare sight. There are very rare mobs in the game. Um, that you only get to see on very rare occasions. Uh, for instance, remember the ice cream truck over there? The Mr. Freeze that um, was down in this direction that we just passed? That's playing its tune? You can actually find Mr. Freeze himself. Mr. Freezy himself. Uh, he's not down where the ice cream truck is. He's over at the back of the graveyard. But you can actually find what happened to the poor man selling the ice cream. And there are other rare mobs like that in the game. So here's Kingsmouth Town Hall. It's um, on Main Street. It's on the same place where you do the supply run. So you would really have come and had a look. Right. So you'd come in here and you'd find the place is a bit wrecked. <laughs> All the chairs have been pushed around. Um, again, the town seal there looks omnia vincit with the lighthouse and the rays of sun and everything tying you into the newspaper re uh, results. Oops. And we've also got paintings on all the walls. And you can come round the back here. Go up some stairs, and upstairs you'll find the, um, what do you say in the town hall, the offices and everything. Down here you've got what would probably have been the mayor's office. The desks and the paperwork strewn everywhere, and the golden key to the town. Can I see it? Yep. Key to Kingsmouth, yes, a big golden key. But over here there's another piece of law, let's pick this up. This one's about the 1712 fire. And there we go. The town council, those who serve the eye and the pyramid, believe the attack was, an, uh, was on them. Precious occult archives and artifacts lost. But the citizens must be pacified. They howl like a mass of hungry dogs. These men of illuminated influence feed, feed the mob. Toss them to harbour workers who are not local, have no family, no one to mourn. The noose hugs their necks. The mob is sated. Tell us, sweetling, which is more disturbing, that the guilty still walk or that the innocent are so very, uh, are so very desperate to kill? So, the Illuminati at the time knew that the fire was um, an attack on them um, and to pacify the people and keep the secrets they just chose two um, workers that they could easily get rid of and hung them for the crime. Very nasty people. But also up here We've got record rooms. And this is what you would have found if you'd have been exploring. You would have found these archives. Um, with all the different paperwork strewn about. So. Find more information about the murders. Well if you look at these. Q1 1997. Q2 1998. Q4 1998 so quarter one quarter two so we've got to find for 2002 1999 2001 2002 Q3 Q2 Q1 so August if you remember she mentioned it was in August August is in the third quarter of the year so let's have a look 
And that's what I struggled with. I didn't... You don't quite listen to the cutscenes the same. Um, if you've played th these sorts of games before, you sort of like, get my quest, get on with it, the quest uh, guide will tell me what to do. But you must listen to everything that's said at all points with the secret world, because a single world word can change everything. Right, so we found this, the Solomon Chronicle. Um, Killer charge. Transient farmhand Larry Checon had been formally charged with the murder of Kingsmas girls. Da, da, and da. <laughs> Townies had been holding an all-night vigil on Elm. Gave an emotional response to the announcement this morning. It marks the end of a summer of horror that has gripped our little town for three months, and the state police manhunt making mainline news. Mainland news. Sheriff Bannerman would not make further comment on the case ahead as the press as the sorry I'll start again Sheriff Bannerman would not make further comments on the case ahead of the state press briefing she has however asked the townies uh, that townies remain calm while justice works its course we at the Chronicle know many of our leaders have questioned the efficiency of the Solomon County Sheriff's Office but there will be time for those questions in the months following the trial right so it seems that they've um, charged uh, a transient again another um, person perhaps with no family nobody to complain too much um, Larry check on with the murder of these girls it's a pattern repeating so details of the case withheld by the sheriff's office but information must surely exist somewhere find more information about the case um, exactly that Details of the case are withheld by the Sheriff's Office. So the next thing we need to do is we need to investigate the Sheriff's Office to see if we can find any more details about uh, the case and this Larry check on and what happened. So let's go down. And I should have, I should t have taken the time because you would, you'd wander around and explore and it was purely my fault. I'm just going through the missions so quickly. Well, not so quickly, but so focusedly, let's say with focus. She obviously didn't want to deal with them, so let's deal with them for them. So we're heading for the sheriff's office now. Oh, somebody there is fighting the uh, golem again. They're doing the uh, supply run mission. I love those golems. <laughs> They're just really cool. Oh, they could be a pain until you get used to handling them. But see how he's running around it in circles and he's firing and he's keeping his attack going all the time with his pistols. Moving around his... I'll not go and take those because he might want to kill those on his way past. Um... Moving around is key to the game. You do tend to stand still um, if you're used to other games, like in Lotro. I, mean, I used to play Lotro, you know, you'd, you'd stand in position and you'd shoot. And Let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got more base dust. And in the good one, we've got some um, heal over time for 65 energy drink. But yes, getting used to being able to move around is important. I really struggled with this at first, when I first um, started playing. Because you're so used to using a mouse that you do try to find ways to do it with the mouse. And I've really found that it's actually better to not. It's, it's better to train yourself to use the, the keyboard. Or... In, for me, it's better to use the keyboard. Oh, what's that? It's a luck talisman. Um, 112 health. 15 attack rating. That will give us more health and more attack rating, but we'll just lose a bit of heal rating. I think I'm going to put that on. It's that one. Yes. Right, 
need I need to do some inventory management and sort all this stuff out. But that's for another time. Let's get to the sheriff's office and see what we can discover about a vagrant called Larry Checkon. You guys still asleep down there? You're always asleep down there. Yeah, that was a heck of an affair. No good for the town. No good for policing. Now I'm through with it, but you can have at the computer there if it'd scratch an itch. Straight away, she told she told us a line of dialogue she doesn't normally do. She says she says, "Yeah, that was a heck of a case, um, and you can have at the computer if you wish." So I was going to talk to her. We haven't talked to her yet. Actually, I should do that as well, um, just to learn a bit more about the things. I don't think I've been through those. Um, so. But she straight away gave, said to us, you know, have at the computer, check the computer. So let's do that. Okay. Right. We've got the, sta uh, the, the suspect database or we've got the station security system. Right. Well, let's have a look at the suspect database. Press number one. Enter the suspect inquiry. We've got Nathan Atherton, Larry Checkon. Bill Dexter, Dave Gardner, and Hans Shea ha Garth <coughs> excuse me, Shea Garcia Hansen. Okay. Well, Larry Checkon's obviously the one that we want, but let's have a look at the others just for flavour. Let's have a look at first of all Nathan Atherton. Um, 2006, sentenced to 13 years in prison, subject to the rape of a tourist by Nathan Atherton. Multiple, report, multiple reports of harassment and eyewitness reports led to the apprehension of the suspect for the rape of, name of minor redacted. So, he raped a girl, not a woman. Um, sent Deputy Gardner home for the evening. I'm concerned for the safety of the prisoner if I leave him alone with Andy. <laughs> Good on you, Andy. So Andy was probably going to uh, strike, strike some vengeance for that. Still, I hope they throw the book at this scumbag. Alright, so let's, number one, return to the database. Is there any more than that? No. Nothing more. Number one. Let's have a look at the next one. Bill Dexter, three. Um, overnight observation. Subject, multiple alcohol, multiple alcohol related misdemeanors of Bill Dexter. Multiple counts of drunk driving, public exposure, <laughs> and creating a public nuisance. Multiple warnings fi uh, filed. All officers have been given, been very lenient but this behaviour can no longer be tolerated. Right, so Bill Dexter was sleeping it off in the prison cell. Dave Gardner. Now, if you remember, Dave Gardner's Andy's father. 1989, um, warning only. Subject reported animal cruelty by Dave Gardner. An eyewitness reported suspect throwing a mewling sack into the bay behind Jack and Wendy's bed and breakfast at Journey's End. Witness not willing to testify. Warning filed. And that's the, the tragic event that Andy talks about where he was... Um, uh, his father th drowned his kittens. Oops. Shouldn't have closed that. So I'll go back to the, the database. Now, Shea Garcia Hansen, number five. 2011. Warning only. Um, subject, multiple noise complaints from local residents. Subject was verbally aggressive, but physically passive. Was not impressed by the small-mindedness of local residents, but agreed to bow to the man. Very hippie sounding, that isn't it? <laughs> um, uh, verbally aggressive, but not physically passive. And uh, all this small-mindedness of local residents and not bowing to the man. Shea Garcia Hansen actually is somebody we will... Um, meet later on and he's voiced by somebody you may all know depends star trek fans will know who it is <laughs> right um let's go back to the suspect database now and the last one we've got to check on larry check on <laughs> check on here we go solomon county police department 
2002. Subject, death of suspect Chekon, Larry Chekon, in custody. So he died in custody. Alone with the suspect at 1am, went over his full written confession for, redacted. Multiple inconsistencies with his story and events, including something else redacted. So, he's confessed to this crime for some reason, but it's not holding water. His story isn't holding water. Helen doesn't believe him, doesn't believe he did it. You ask my ghost for the truth, Sheriff, check on. Uh, check on said, you ask my ghost for the truth. Check on took his own life in his cell between the hours of 4 and 5 a.m. Discovered at 7 a.m. Seen already redacted. All outstanding work on the investigation to be closed. Right. So, Larry Checkon was in custody and he killed himself after claiming he did these murders. Or being forced to claim, uh, say he did these murders. Um... And the only thing he would say was, ask my ghost for the, um, for the truth. So, we're here. The suspect killed himself while in custody. Custody. His last words were, the were that the truth would be told by his ghost. Examine the cell for more clues. So let's examine the cell. Here's the cell. Now, you can't get in, it's locked. Let's go forward a little bit. You can see some faint scribbling. Bannerman is hot. <laughs> Another one over here, Bannerman can suck. And there's also tiny scribblings on the wall. And there's uh, tallies of days they spent in jail. There's the bucket and the mattress. And this is where a lot of people get stumped. This is the point where you say, well, what can I possibly do now? And it's it's what really baffled me for a long time. I got really stuck on this. Um, but again, the clues are there. You've just got to realise they're actually there and they're talking to you. Um, there's no way into this cell. You can't get in. There's nothing to open it. There's no key somewhere, which I spent ages looking for. <laughs> There's uh, no one you can ask to open it. There's no way in. But remember, the thing says, um, his last words were that the truth would be told by his ghost. And the revelation, the one that solved it, for it of course, is that we are not bound to our body. We can pass in and out of the spirit world, if you remember. Um, I have done a couple of times now, um, where I have... Uh, it's not when you die, you sort of like, your body becomes exhausted, and your spirit steps into the... Sp uh, your spirit ends up in the, the spirit world, but then you can return to your body. Um, and this is the one thing that people struggle with, is they deliberately sort of like killing yourself to pass in and out of the spirit world. It's a puzzle that a lot of people wouldn't get. Now I'm going to just go somewhere else to do it because I don't want it to keep saying do you want to respawn at your body. So I'm just going to go over to the uh, the um, merchants over here where it's it's over here just to get out of the way. Let's press X to sprint. There we go. We can sprint now. Now you could just go and let a monster beat you up and kill you, but there's also another way. Um, you can press return or enter to get you down into the control panel here. And then if you press slash reset, you can deliberately suicide yourself. Um, and it's something that's very difficult to get your head around. The fact that dying to this person, this one with all the anima inside them, actually can be a benefit, it can help. Um, when the game originally came out you could use dying to fast travel, you could kill yourself and go through the spirit world so you would be travelling so much faster to go go around all the different anima wells. You know, you could jump around the towns you could uh, uh, and everything with it. Um, these days you don't need to do that, you can actually um, don't need to die to do it, you can actually perform what's called an anima jump which is uh, jump from bonfire to uh, anima well to anima well by paying just 
about 150 credits. Um, in fact, actually, I'll show you. If I put, oops, oh, I can't press M there yet. Hang on, let's come out of that. I've just pressed M to bring up the map. See, if I go to Journey's End, uh, Animal Leap, I can. Pref if I click on that now, I can do an Animal Leap, and I'll go for all the way from here, all the way over there, for the sake of about 150 packs. In the past, you used to have to kill yourself and then choose to resurrect at that that one. So dying voluntarily is something that's very unnatural for most people. So, but here we go. Slash reset. We're going to die voluntarily. It's not dying. We're going to pass into the spirit world. Your anima form will be released from its body and respawn at the nearest anima well. So release now. There we go. So we're going to start at the nearest anima well. And that's why people struggle with this, is the idea of just voluntarily dying. But I, it helps if you think of this as the spirit world, you know. Think of this as, um, oh, what's it called when the... Uh, Uh, step out of the bodies and astral, you know, astral walking, um, that sort of thing. We're in the spirit world now. We we can see. We don't see the living. We only see the dead. And here, if we come back into the thing to look at his, his ghost, you'll suddenly see the jail cell door is open, and standing there is Larry Checkham. So we're actually inside there now, Larry Checkham. But his ghost isn't actually telling us anything. What you need to do is, you need to think, well, what's he doing? He's looking at something. What's he looking at? He's looking at these words here. So let's read them. The white ravens whisper. Golden girls, sorrowful. Secrets are never told. Uh, there's a lot more in this this simple phrase than you would believe as well. I don't know whether or not you remember from a previous episode where I, I talked about the ravens when we was dealing with um, Madame Roger and we was, we was doing the hunt for the ravens and I told how ravens are very, very mythical birds. Well, certain mythologies um, like um, Aborigines, um, uh, Indian mythologies uh, believe that the ravens were originally white before they became black. Um, but there's also something else to do with this. It says, The white ravens whisper, Golden girls, sorrowful, Secrets are never told. Right. So let's have a look now. An eerie message was scribbled on the wall of the cell, only visible in an alternate consciousness. consciousness. The white ravens whisper, Golden girls, sorrowful, Secrets are never told. There is definitely more to these murders than meets the eye, and the ordinary world. Figure out what the cryptic message means. Right. Well, um, let me get out of first person. It's funny, it moves so, totally different when you're in first person than when you're in third person, which is a bit of a pain. We're in here, and if you wander around in the spirit world now looking for more clues, be able to see from here yes you'll be able to see from here just outside the door suddenly you can see a white bird a white raven now also if you remember what I said about the mythology of the ravens is that Swedish mythology um, believes that ravens are the souls of murdered people so could that be the soul of a murdered girl? Let's go out a bit closer to it. And it's flying off. There it goes. Let's follow it like we did with the other ravens. Let's follow it. And where's it gone? It's gone in this direction. There's in it. There it is again. Let's follow it still further. Head in the direction it head, and look what we've found here. We've found a whole um, group of ravens. Six for gold, seven for a secret. 
secret, never to be told. Now, when you stand near them, they, they tell you something. Seven that one said. Seven for a secret, never to be told. Seven for a secret, never to be told. Six for gold. Six for gold. Three for a girl. Three for a girl. Now, do you recognise that? Do you know the old old um, rhyme? It's whether or not you do or not, but there's a rhyme. Um, for instance, here in England, we say it when we see magpies. A lot of people say it when they see ravens. Um, and it's whether you see them in groups and everything. It's a superstitious one. It's designed sort of like people believe like, oh, if you say the rhyme when you see the, the right number of uh, birds, um, that will come to you. So, for instance, if you see um, two magpies on the on the road, or two ravens in this case, uh, if you say the rhyme, you'll find out what that is signifying. And the rhyme is uh, one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. Um, it's a bit of folklore. It's something you would either know or not know. But you could find it by um, using the browser, the in-game browser, to um, put in what these ma uh, these ravens are saying. These souls of murdered girls are telling you. Um, so let's go along the the line. Five for silver. Five for silver. Two for joy. Two for joy. Now you might notice that they're not in order either. You can't just start at one end and they'll say one, two, three. They're out of order. Two for One for sorrow. So, does that help us in any way now we've found these ravens? Well, let's have another look at the cryptic message. The white ravens whisper. Yes, they are whispering. Golden girls, sorrowful secrets are never told. If you now look at it, you can realise that these are parts of the rhyme. Um, And all you've got to do is use this, Golden Girl Sorrowful Secrets. How does that work? Right. One for sorrow. Well, if you go along, Four for a boy. we want to find Golden first. Two for joy. Five for silver. Three for a girl. Six for gold. Gold. Right, gold. Six for gold. So let's use the bird where you, you use it and it will fly away six for gold so the next one golden girls we want girls that was this one wasn't it three for a girl three for a girl what's the next one sorrowful one for sorrow we want to find One for sorrow. Okay. And then the last one, secrets are never to be told. Now, before I click this one, I will say that the next part is a little bit timed, I think, if I'm right. You, and I think you have a minute after that. Two for joy. Otherwise, you'd have to repeat everything to go back through this, I think. Two for joy. Five for silver. So let's find this last one. Secret never to be told. Looking for Jack the lad, <laughs> you found him. Right, we're looking for Jack the lad, you found him. So we've got to come to where this is. Now, look at this guy when you see him, just look at him. There's Jack, Jack the lad. Was he the one who did all the murders? All the white souls come in, attack him bring you back into the world and he comes out in his true form rotted pumpkins vegetation just look at him jack-o-lantern wonderful wonderful creature wonderful creature now in this first part all you have to do is find him and he's going to run off 
we're at the pumpkin patch here now. This is not a safe place to stand, but let's stand here anyway. Um, one day you must describe where you went and what you saw during this latest excursion. I suspect I shall need a drink while you do. Stay away, Wisp. Jack the lad, an old Irish boy who came to Kingsmouth after the famine. Um, he would have been a tad old to commit these recent murders, though stranger things have happened, as you tirelessly attest. Whatever his fate, it, further, it offers further evidence of the occult energy of the island. I am pleased that you are willing to go to such lengths to uncover it. Uh, also suitably concerned. So we got some money and uh, some more sequins for that. So, um, there was a murderer who came. An Irish boy who came, Jack the Lad, and murdered girls. But... Like some murderers in horror and uh, supernatural stories. When he died, that wasn't the end of it. Um, for some reason, maybe he was hung here. We'll, I don't know, we'll see. For some reason, he became attached to the pumpkins and the, the vegetation here, the spirit of the earth, and formed himself a body and uh, his soul lingered on as Jack O'Lantern. Jack O'Lantern we've not seen the last of. We'll see him again later. Um, the first mission was just introducing you to him. But I love this place. This is um, one we haven't been to yet. This is the pumpkin patch. If you look on the map, we're um, we're just here. Just behind Poor Cove, behind Norma's house. Um, this is the pumpkin patch. And uh, it's a suitably creepy, nasty place. You can actually climb this tree. I don't know how many people know that. But you can actually get up this tree. Oops, missed it. <laughs> and you can stand up there and... Uh, let's see. Come on, come on. Nothing, nothing to see up there, but it's an interesting thing. Difficult to do. There we go. Come on. Ah, I missed it again. Ah, well, that's all right. <laughs> but it's just a—it's just an old tree, and you get a nice view from up there. But this place is surrounded by the pumpkins, and these things, wisps. Ah, oh, it wisps. <laughs> Not because they're that difficult to beat. But if you don't kill them quickly, they will split into um, two. And they're a ranged creature. Yeah, let's take one and show it you. I'll not kill it off quickly, so... Come on. There you go, see it split. So if you don't get them fast enough, they can split into two and uh, you're suddenly in more trouble again. But what a great place this is with the evil tree. And that's a very, that's, it's not that difficult a mission if you know the two things. One, to listen to every single word. A simple word, just one word, can mean something. Um can be the key to solving the mission. Uh, they really are important. They, they place the, as I say, um, for a reason. And also, too, knowing that you can step in and out of the spirit world. I'm not sure whether or not my items will have taken damage now through doing that, though. I might have to go and get them repaired. But, there you go. That was um, one of the missions I found the most difficult the first time because, like I say, simply didn't realise I could step into the into the spirit world. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a long one. I've been Mindfiend. You guys, as always, have been wonderful. Bye for now. <laughs>